Ever wondered how to respond to the martyr apology? The one where the person apologizes but plays the victim? Welcome to the realm of the martyr apology, a crafty tactic often employed by those who veer towards narcissistic behavior. Picture this. The person apologizes but in the same breath, they paint themselves as the tormented martyr. The one who's merely trying to do everything right. An apology that's not really an apology. The martyr apology is a deflection, a diversion a way to avoid taking responsibility. They're not saying sorry because they've acknowledged their wrongs. No, they're saying sorry because they want to highlight just how hard they're trying, just how overwhelmed they are. They're seeking attention, sympathy, validation, and they want you to feel guilty for having a negative reaction. But here's the secret sauce on how to respond. Focus on your feelings. Don't give in to their martyr complex. Don't validate what they're doing right. Instead, express your feelings and state your boundaries. For example, you might say, I felt upset because you did this particular action. By doing this, you're taking the focus off their self-imposed victimhood and putting it back on the issue at hand. In the face of a martyr apology, it's crucial to remember that your feelings are valid. You're entitled to react negatively when someone hurts or disrespects you. Don't let the person's attempts to play the martyr guilt you into dismissing your feelings or accepting their behavior. This is your emotional territory, and you have the right to guard it. The martyr apology is a cleverly disguised attempt to manipulate your feelings and reactions, but once you see it for what it is, you can choose not to play their game. So the next time you encounter a martyr apology, remember this. Don't let the person's portrayal of themselves as the victim distract you from your feelings and your right to respect and decency. Remember, don't let the martyr apology guilt you into ignoring your feelings. Now. Let's move on to the conditional apology. This one can leave you feeling confused and guilty. A conditional apology is one where the individual only apologizes if you feel or react a certain way. It's a clever tactic, a smokescreen, providing the illusion of an apology while not actually admitting any wrongdoing. Picture this. You're upset because someone made a mistake that affected you. When you confront them, their response is, I'm sorry if I did something wrong. Or perhaps they say, I'm sorry if you thought I'd do it the other way. Notice the use of the word, if. This implies that they're only sorry under certain conditions, specifically if you perceive that they've done something wrong. It's a way of shifting the blame onto you by suggesting that the issue lies in your perception, not their actions. This can be a tough one to handle, mainly because it can leave you questioning your own feelings. But remember, your feelings are valid. You're entitled to them. If someone's actions have upset you, it's not about if they did something wrong. It's about the fact that they did, and it had an impact on you. So how should you respond to a conditional apology? The key is to avoid the if part altogether. Keep things objective, stick to the facts. State exactly what happened and how you felt about it. For instance, you might say, when you did. This approach keeps the focus on their actions and your emotions, rather than getting tangled up in their conditional ifs. Navigating these kinds of apologies can be tricky, but it's important to stand your ground. Don't let someone else's refusal to take responsibility make you question your feelings or reactions. Your emotions are your own and they are valid. So next time you're faced with a conditional apology, remember to sidestep the if trap. Stick to the facts. Express your feelings. And most importantly, don't let the conditional apology make you feel guilty for your feelings. You're entitled to them. Next up is the silent treatment apology, where the person apologizes, then suddenly gives you the cold shoulder. Imagine a situation where an apology is offered and for a fleeting moment, everything seems to be back on track. But then, like a switch being flipped, the person who just apologized turns icy. They retreat into a shell, stonewalling you or worse, serving you a hefty dose of the silent treatment. It's as if their apology was a mere precursor to a more profound upset. This is a classic example of a silent treatment apology. It's a tactic often employed by individuals with narcissistic tendencies and it can be incredibly disorienting. They've apologized, haven't they? So why do they now seem more upset than before? Here's the catch. The silent treatment apology is part of a push-pull dynamic that is common in narcissistic relationships. The person wants your empathy and understanding, but at the same time, they are devaluing you. It's an emotional roller coaster designed to keep you off balance and unsure of where you stand. So how should you respond to a silent treatment apology? The answer might surprise you, the best response is no response. That's right, don't engage with the silent treatment. 
Don't plead with them to talk to you or ask them what's wrong. Remember, this is a game for them, and they're looking for your reaction. Instead, hold your ground. Stay calm and disconnect emotionally from the situation. This might be difficult, especially if you care about the person, but it's essential for your own mental health. This doesn't mean you're being cold or unfeeling. It simply means that you're choosing not to participate in their game. Understanding the silent treatment apology can help you navigate complex interactions with narcissistic individuals. It's crucial to remember that their behavior is not a reflection of your worth or value. You deserve respect and genuine apologies when wrongs are done. Don't let the silent treatment apology suck you into the person's push-pull dynamic. Lastly, we have the apology refusal. This one can be particularly tough to handle. This is where the narcissist simply refuses to apologize at all. They might even scoff or laugh at you for expecting an apology. The audacity, right? This approach is common among malignant narcissists, but don't be surprised if you see it in covert narcissists as well. To them, an apology essentially feels beneath their grandiose self-image. Imagine this scenario. You're upset about something they did, and you express your feelings, hoping for an apology. Instead, they laugh it off or completely dismiss your feelings, refusing to accept any responsibility. It's as if they're saying, me apologize, you must be joking. This can be incredibly frustrating and hurtful. However, it's essential to remember that their refusal to apologize is a reflection of their personality disorder, not a measure of your worth or the validity of your feelings. The refusal to apologize is a defense mechanism that allows them to maintain their inflated self-image. So how should you respond to the apology refusal? The key lies in focusing on what you can control. You can't make someone apologize, and would you really want an insincere apology given only for the sake of it? The answer is likely no. Instead, focus on self-care and validating your feelings. Recognize that your feelings are valid and you have every right to feel upset or hurt. Remember, you don't need their apology to validate your feelings. Consider seeking support from trusted friends or a mental health professional to help you navigate these tough situations. They can provide you with strategies to maintain your self-esteem and emotional health in the face of narcissistic behavior. Remember, it's not about winning an argument or getting them to see your point of view. It's about protecting your emotional well-being and asserting your boundaries. Don't let the apology refusal undermine your self-worth. You can't control their actions, but you can control your reactions. Now that we've covered the different types of fake apologies, Let's talk about what happens when you ignore these apologies and how to respond positively. Narcissists are notorious for their reliance on validation and attention. It's their lifeblood, the fuel that keeps their ego engine running. An apology, as hollow as it may be, is often their attempt to maintain stability in their relationships. They will go to great lengths to protect their narcissistic supply. And when this supply is threatened, they react. Ignoring a narcissist can be an incredibly disarming act. It's the equivalent of pulling the plug on their energy source. They'd rather face negative feedback than be met with silence. It's not uncommon for narcissists to react with intense anger when they are ignored. It's their way of regaining control, of putting the spotlight back on them. So, how do you respond positively to a narcissist? It's a tough question and there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Narcissistic abuse can feel like a never-ending maze, frustrating and disorienting with no clear exit in sight. But remember, you can't control the narcissist's behavior, but you can control your own response. Your first line of defense is setting clear boundaries. Understand your limits in the relationship. Identify what you are absolutely not willing to tolerate. Once you've defined these boundaries, it's crucial to protect them steadfastly. Next, build a robust support system. Surround yourself with people who understand your situation, who can offer empathy and perspective. They can serve as a reality check when the narcissist tries to distort your truth. Finally, cultivate your self-esteem. This is your armor against the narcissist's attacks. Nurture your self-worth through healthy coping skills. Engage in activities that make you feel good about yourself. Avoid getting caught up in the narcissist's ego as much as you can. Remember, dealing with these types of apologies can be challenging but you have the power to respond in a way that protects your well-being and self-worth. 